Good morning, and welcome to another episode of Flossoween. What have I been up to? Well, you knew I was going to be starting this one, the pumpkin trio, and I did start stitching it, but I did not get the beading done, so let's see where I ended up with on that one. You gotta love those colors. Look at how pretty that is. So, I did all the stitching, and then, um, why didn't I do the beading? I didn't do the beading because when we sat down to do, when I sat down to do some stitching, we were down in the basement, and that's not a good area for me to do beading. It's just not a real, uh, it's kind of dark down there. I just have a small lamp because we were watching a show on Netflix. We were watching um, a show called Away, which I really love. So far, it's really good. But I didn't want to do beading down there, so I just went ahead and grabbed another kit to work on that had looked that looked like it had some easy stitching. So I put that off to the side, and I went ahead and grabbed this one right here because I thought, okay, that one doesn't have very many colors. You know, it just had a, a couple of browns and some beiges. So I worked on stitching that, did all the stitching in one night, and had we gotten an earlier start, I, call, I probably could have done the beading in, in the same evening, but I went ahead and did the beading the next morning. So yes, I could have done the beading on this the next morning, but this one just looked like it would just finish up so quickly, and it did. So I'm happy to report that I actually finished this one. So look at the sparkle in that. Now my stitches here in this area don't really look all that great because I was stitching in not the best lighting so now that I am in good lighting I can see that my stitching doesn't look that great but don't look too close at that it's all good so look at how pretty that is now I actually then said I'm going to really try to get these fully finished so I went ahead and did the bead hanger on it and that's very easy to do if you haven't done that. So there's lots of ways you can finish this. You can attach a magnet to the back, but I like to do the hangers because what I'd like to do is get one of those little artificial Halloween trees, those little black Halloween trees, to be able to display, to display all these on. And that's why I made the little hanger. So very easy. I just do a loop start. I find sort of a, you know, one of the holes up at the top and do a loop start and then just thread a pattern with the leftover needles and then come back down in probably an, the hole right next to it, just so it's, they're not both going in the same hole, and then just kind of weave the extra thread into the back. And then I just get some glue, and you can use the adhesive-backed felt. Somebody had given me that suggestion, or I have so much felt that's not the adhesive back that I just go ahead and glue it. I just use some Aileen's Tacky Glue. I show it in a previous video. Um, I did a video a couple of years ago. It's kind of long and drawn out, and I probably could do it a lot better if I were to do it again, but uh, it's a good enough tutorial. I'll link it down below, but I do show how I put the glue on the back. I do a, an attachment a little bit different there, but I have since learned to do these little beaded hangers, which I like so much better than the way I did it in that video. But yeah, I just get some Aileen's Tacky Glue, and I actually water it down a little bit and just paint it on with one of those... Um, disposable paint brushes and then stick the felt on the back and cut it. Now I have also seen somebody on, I don't remember who, but they, you can take some thread and you can do like a whip stitch after you get the felt on. You can even, if you don't want to use glue, you can actually get a whip stitch and whip kind of right around the edge of, you know, where the, the holes are and you can do an, and that's a really nice finish. I don't really want to take the time to do that. You know, I kind of want to move on to the next project so but that's a definitely a nice way to finish off the edge on these two so lots of different ways you can back them with scrapbook paper you know whatever but and then like I said you can they always come with a magnet and then you can attach the magnet if you don't want to hang it so yeah very pretty okay so my goal moving forward is to finish the beading on this one, but then I was in the same position again where we were watching another show down in the basement, so I wanted to have one that was just easy stitching, so I actually grabbed this one to start, because once again, it only has a couple, just a few, I think four colors is all, so I did start to do the stitching on that one, but I'm almost done, so I'm going to wait and show you that in the next video when I have a complete finish on that one. 
So let's see what else to talk about. Um, my needle minder there you might recognize is the same. I bought this these set of charms at Michael's and I bought two packs and I made a little bracelet. with the charms on it. And then I took the extra charms and made a bunch of these tiny needle minders because it's nice to have really small needle minders when you're working on these because you don't want something too heavy because they're so small. So another cute idea for that. And organizing my threads. Normally what I do is I just get a note card, fold it in half, punch some holes in it, and do my, because you know, they it, the threads come in a big wad like that and you have to organize them. But I have this Paco or Paco needle organizer, or floss organizer, that I hardly ever use. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to use it for my Mill Hill kits because you work on them for such a short time that it's almost not worth it to make, you know, specialized floss tags. I mean, the note card definitely works easy, too, because you just punch holes in it. And so that's an option. But I thought, you know, I'm going to give this some use. I bought it. I may as well use it. So it's super easy to put the... Let me show you, let me switch hands here. So when you, try not to shake you too much here, but it's it's easy because you, you know, you just loop the thread and you just put it on there and you stick them right down in between. This is like foam right there. So you put it in there. So it's really easy to do. And then when you wanna go take a piece of thread off of there. Let me grab my needle. You just grab your needle. Really hope I'm not being too shaky here. And just grab a piece of floss and you pull it. And I'm actually, I need to hold it with my hand. But anyway, you get the idea. You just pull it and it's it's super easy. And you just put it the little, uh, draw the little coordinating symbols so you know exactly which goes to which. And for my football it only had these what five colors I didn't even bother drawing the symbols because it's just easy to see which one is the you know pretty much rust medium brown dark brown off-white and beige so I didn't even bother doing the symbols but I had to do the symbols for the pumpkins because there was a lot of colors yes I mean there's like five shades of just the orange Okay, so that's where I'm at with that. And what you will see, hopefully, in my next video are these two projects that I'm going to start also. After I finish the football, I've decided to do the Midnight Owl and the Red Cap Mushroom. So we'll see how far I get on those. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to say in this update, so I will see you in a couple of days. Bye, guys.